take a polygraph. Sure. Okay. He's just agreed to do a lie detector test. Is he so sure of himself that he thinks he's going to pass this lie detector test? Let's have a look. Um, you know that we have to get to the bottom of this. Uh, you know that. Yeah. Okay. Would you take a polygraph? Sure. Okay. Would you take it tonight? In fact, that's what you want me to do. Yeah. I've never done one. I don't know like what it involves, but okay. you know where it is. Uh, from what I've seen, it goes on your finger. You know what the purpose of one is? That's for a lie detector test. Okay. Um, all right. I want to remind you that tonight is voluntary, okay? I can't keep you in here. I won't keep you in here. If you want to get right up and walk out of here, you can do that, okay? All right. Do you want to keep talking with me? I mean, I can. Okay. I mean, if that's what you want, I can keep talking. Okay. So we've seen by him swearing that he doesn't feel sure he's going to do well in this lie detector test. He obviously thinks there's a big chance that his lies are going to be quite obvious now. So why did he agree to do it? Well, because he's a covert narcissist, he wears a mask um, of being a really good person. And the person that he's pretending to be, he doesn't relate to. So the reason why he put himself in that position is because he can't go off piste. He has to stick to the script. The script is, I'm an, a really nice guy. He doesn't know how to deviate and find a middle ground, you know, where he can act like, yes, he's innocent, but no, he won't do the lie detector test. It's very much all or nothing. And he's nervous that if he, if he refuses to do it, he's going to look guilty. And he's also going to look like he's not this loving family man and he can't protect himself by by taking that risk as opposed to a much bigger risk of his lies now being uncovered why should i believe you because i'm a very trustworthy person and the people that do know me they know how i'm a calm person i am not an argumentative person i am a person who is that's never going to be abusive or physical in any kind of relationship I would never harm my kids. I would never harm my wife. I mean, you can talk. I mean, any, you can talk to any of my friends, any of her friends. Chris Watts is describing his fake persona to the investigator, and it's this persona that he's very confident people are going to believe in, and many of them did. Um, and this is why so many victims don't talk about what's going on because uh, a lot of people would just think they were crazy because the narcissist seems so nice and they themselves often believe that too um, and, and you know they doubt their own experience. I'm sure I'm on the, on the window sill there and when we got back from North Carolina yes, you saw him sitting over there and she proceeded to take them back and wear them every day since they got back. <laughs> Remember, it was 100 degrees outside her what? She loved those shoes. She always loves those shoes. He slips up and says loved in the past tense and then corrects himself. She loved those shoes. Is that something that an innocent man would be talking about to detectives at this point? Would he be telling long stories about his daughter and when she wears these shoes that are meant for winter? No. A, a person who is innocent at this stage would be freaking out about where his daughters are. But Chris doesn't know how to um, perform this. You know, he, he's so used to wearing this mask of this person he doesn't relate to and trying to, um, to repeat a script that he's learned. You know, when I talk about my cute things my daughters do, that works. You know, people think I'm a nice guy, um, that I care about my kids and love them. This is another sign that 
he's not who he's trying to pretend to be. Th that kind of red flag can come across to you when you just feel like this just doesn't feel right. You know, he's saying things that sound like a nice person, but it just doesn't, it doesn't fit this situation properly. It's a really good thing to watch out for. When Chris Watts talks about his kids and talks about the, the cute things they do, that has usually worked in the past. And the reason for that is because normal, kind, conscientious people want to see the best in other people. And so when they come across a guy who shows them photos of his kids, talks about cute things that they've done, you know, why would they, why would they not just see this loving family man? E even if he, he's a bit fake when he's doing it, the chances are they're not going to pick up on that because we see, we see what we want to see. You know, and there's no reason to want to see him as a bad man in that context. So the, the difficulty for Chris Watts comes around when he's in a different context and he still replays the same material that he would have played um, when he was in the context of people who are assuming the best of him. As soon as you put a covert narcissist under a spotlight, you start to see that things just don't really add up. Um, and I think you know why I have to ask them, okay? And it's a hard job. It is a hard job. It's a hard job. There we see some fake empathy. Um, you know, he's sucking up to the detective here. Oh, I really empathise with your position. I'm a nice guy. Just get off my back because I care about you. When confronted, they're either going to suck up to the person and be extra fake, you know, extra understanding, or their rage is going to come out. For an overt narcissist, that's very different. You know, for an overt narcissist, you just don't get the first part. You just get the anger. How dare you criticise me? Yeah, tell me about it. Now, I have never cheated on my wife. Yeah. And I fully suspect she has never done that to me. Oh, okay. Like, she's always been a trustworthy person. I've always been a trustworthy person. I fully expect if we ever thought about straying another way, mm -hmm. that we would tell each other before it happened. I think that sounds ridiculous. Okay. Because in the history of the earth, nobody ever does that. Okay. And as you can see, the detective doesn't buy it at all. We know that he's lying when he says he's never cheated on his wife because we know that he has Nicole Kessinger in the background and that you know they're having this full-on affair. Um, What's interesting is, is the extreme he goes to. Not only would he never cheat on his wife, but they, they, you know, they would tell each other before if they're even thinking of it. And that's the kind of thing that maybe couples might agree on. If you ever do want to be unfaithful, just tell me. That, that, that's probably quite a natural kind of conversation that you might have had with your partner. But is that the kind of thing you'd say if someone in this situation asks you if you're having an affair? If you're innocent of it, your response would probably be no. And maybe some frustration that, that the detective might be wasting their time asking questions like that when they should be looking for your missing partner and your children. Chris Watts can't, um, he can't really behave like someone would in that situation because he's just not that person and he doesn't relate to that, that person. So again, he just presses play. He goes straight back to to this, this act that he puts on, his mask firmly in place, and he comes across like the nicest possible person, but in a way that just doesn't sound natural to tell the policeman under these circumstances. We would have this agreement where we'd tell each other, you know, who's gonna say that to a detective in these, in these circumstances? And I've got to imagine that maybe there was a girl that inspired that? No. No? No. Okay. Why are you falling out of love? Now for the last, last, this last five weeks, like being by myself and being able to be myself again, I couldn't be myself around you anymore. Why not? It was like I was walking just like, if, like a, you know, like walk on eggshells type thing. It's kind of like you don't, you feel like you're always doing something that's wrong. It's like you, you feel like you're never like, does make does that make sense at all? The timing doesn't make sense to me. Okay, but like, it's like like if you can't be yourself around your wife, who can you be yourself around? Why couldn't you be yourself around your wife? 
I just felt like I'd always have to change who I was because I, I was always about, I mean, I was doing the laundry, I'd do, I'd do everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd do everything that I could for her, everything. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the last five weeks, I was just like, I was just, you know, just being myself, just doing me. He's playing the victim and he wants the detective to see him as, as a victim, you know, someone who's so lovely to, to um, have cared about his wife and, and done all he can for her. And in reality, he probably really does think that what he's saying is true, because a covert narcissist, everything they do is for a reason. And so when he was helping Shanann out, doing the things she asked for with, in terms of preparing the kids' pack lunches and so on, getting their clothes together for school, all of this kind of thing. He would be thinking just how generous that was of him and he would be expecting really positive feedback, you know. He, he's expecting his narcissistic supply for, for doing this act. He wants somebody to, to be saying like, wow, what a great husband you are. For Shanann to be, to be telling him and everybody else what a wonderful husband he is to be doing all of this for her. And I'm sure he would have put across to her that that's what he's expecting. And so it doesn't surprise me that she made comments on Facebook and that she made YouTube videos talking about just how lucky she was and just what a wonderful man Chris Watts is, you know. I, I do think that some of that really um, was genuine, that she, she was genuinely, you know, she did really love him. But I also think that there was a feeling that this is what was needed, that he needed to be constantly um, validated and to keep being seen as this amazing guy, to keep this narcissistic supply going. And here he's talking, quite frankly, really, about why his rage would have built up. He's not admitting to feeling any rage, of course, because he's playing the role of the victim. But he is talking about um, this feeling of resentment and how, no matter what he did, he just wasn't getting enough back. It's, it's, it's impossible for a covert narcissist to ever get enough back. Maybe at the very beginning of a relationship they might, but at some point people people have other things to think about and they can't constantly put someone on a pedestal and constantly praise them for everything they do to help. And as you can see, the detective doesn't buy it at all. I tell you, that sounds like a load of horseshit. Uh, uh, I know. What about the girls? Bella and Celeste are light of my life. I'd do anything for those girls. I'd step in front of a bullet so I'd train for those girls. The rest of the relationship between me and Shanann has nothing to do with the love I have for these girls. I mean, the love for these girls, these, I mean, they're the light of my life. I would do anything for them. Mm -hmm. I'd step in front of a bullet or in front of a train for those girls. Is that something you would ever hear someone say in real life? Or does that sound more like a badly written film script? You know, who says something like that? It's very odd, isn't it? And that's because he is again just going to one extreme. Again, it's just very fake because he doesn't really relate to this person that he's playing. Um, and it's also interesting that he calls them these girls. He does that quite a lot. Um, he doesn't say my daughters because he doesn't feel, you know, or my girls because he doesn't feel, um, he doesn't feel intimate with them, and that comes out in the way that he describes them. I mean, you can't take the kids into the fact into the factor because, like, when the love you have for your kids is going to be like exponential. I mean, it, it'll no matter what, that will never die because mm -hmm. those are your kids. Mm -hmm. That'll never die. Here he uses the word exponential. Again, is that something that you hear day to day, you know, when someone's talking about their family and how they feel about them? Do you ever hear someone saying that they love their children exponentially? It's again just the, the you know, what is the most extreme word I can find to just prove that I'm this good guy? And it's that that, that is, um, you know, making him stand out. It's, it's the fact that everything is so exaggerated. And you can find, they'll often use big flamboyant language 
um, to just get across how much they mean something or how much they care about someone. But but then they don't actually act. Um, they don't act in the way that they that they speak. And the reason they use these big words is partly because they don't relate to this person that they're pretending to be. And it's also as just a way to to really try and, and prove their point. But if they think if their language is extreme, then you know you're you're just going to be swallowed up in it, and you're not going to see the way that they actually behave. It's interesting as well that he uses the word die. He said that a couple of times now. Let's listen again. When you, the love you have for your kids is going to be like exponential. I mean, it, it'll no matter what, that will never die because mm -hmm. those are your kids. Mm -hmm. That will never die. This is another thing that can often happen with guilty people who are lying, that the truth comes out in their language. And so he's using the word die where he wouldn't really need to use that word. He could say forever, you know, I love them forever. But, but he, he's, he's using the word die twice now. And that's quite, um, that's quite interesting. It's, it's his unconscious giving him away. The love that you have for each other, like from start to finish, like from right when you started to where you're in your, if your relationship ends, like some like when you're in that type of relationship, you're with somebody for that long, something happens, like something like if it's just conversations or if it's just like you know, I mean it's not attractiveness at all, like it's just a connection that isn't there, like you know when you can like look at someone. And, or just like put your forehead to their forehead and you just like hold them and you know what each other's thinking, that's a connection. I didn't have that connection anymore. And that makes sense, you know, if you're constantly pretending to be someone else with someone, which is what, as a covert narcissist, he was doing, and what he even admits to doing in this interview, then, you know, that is going to get quite tiresome. And after a while, he just gets sick of the person he's in a relationship with because he's just not getting the narcissistic supply he needs. They're not adoring him every moment of the day. Um, and so if he becomes abusive, he can still get his narcissistic supply. But if he's in the kind of relationship where he can't do that enough of the time, you know, then he's going to start to get really bored and frustrated. And I think with um, Chris Watts and Shanann Watts, I think that he would have been devaluing her, um, but that it wouldn't have been um, as severe or as often as he needed it to be. You have to trust me that when I tell you that these two beautiful girls right here, I did nothing to them and to my beautiful wife, I did nothing to her. And here he's just slipped up again. He's just talked about how he wanted to leave his wife. He's talked about the reasons why. Um, and But now he refers to her as his beautiful wife rather than by her name. And so so here, this is quite a major slip up that if, if he was not lying and if he was genuinely this man who was having all these problems with his wife, um, but she'd then gone missing, he wouldn't refer to her as his beautiful wife, would he? Unless he completely regretted that, that he was going to leave her, in which case he wouldn't have been talking about all the reasons that he wanted to leave her to the, um, to the detective. Like, you have to trust me and believe me. Like, I know you don't know me as a person. You, you've known me for like two and a half, three hours. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what your opinion is, but you have to realize that these two beautiful girls right here and my wife, I had nothing to do with the disappearance. Like, they vanished, they were taken, someone take, has taken them, they're safe somewhere, we don't know. I had nothing to do with, these, with, this, with this act of like evil cruelty, whatever has happened here. So he's just talked about how his family are hopefully safe and sound somewhere, um, and now he's suddenly changed it to talking about this act of evil cruelty. That's another giveaway, you know, what does he think it is? Does he think that they're safe or does he think that they're in trouble? Just another obvious lie. And the act of evil cruelty, where do you see that kind of um, phrase? You know, you might see that on the front of a newspaper, mightn't you? Because he can't um, be real, he will just take the kinds of things he says from, from different people um, often in films um, or from something he's seen in a newspaper. 
he 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 can't um, improvise because he just has to um, he has to take these things that he's seen and use them. Um, and again, that's because he just doesn't relate to the character that he's trying to portray. And you'll often see this with covert narcissists, that they will actually copy what they see in films. And they'll also copy their partner sometimes. You notice with Chris Watts that he's often saying like, and maybe this was something that he always did, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets this from Nicole, you know, if this is a new thing he's been doing. Because watch how they both do this. Like, he could pretty much call me whenever he wanted. Like, I was the one that would tell him, like, hey, when your kids are awake, you need to spend time with your kids. Like, do that. And then after they go to bed, like, if you want to talk to me, you can talk to me. Like, like the love that you have for each other, like, from start to finish, like, from right when you started to where you're in your, if your relationship ends, like, some, like... In the next video, I'm going to talk about Chris Watts since his arrest. Um, the way that he's behaved, the way he came across in court, um, and the way he's been since he's been in jail. Um, so we'll talk about that next time. Um, you know, please um, keep your questions coming because um, I might, at the end of this series, I might do um, a video where I answer questions, you know, if I get enough of them. So um, please, please uh, note down any questions you have in the comments section. Please subscribe and um, talk to you in the next video.